What's up you guys, Joe Dobby here. I am now a Deck Out Gaming affiliate. Use Joe Dobbs Deck Out at checkout. Deck Out Gaming has tons of singles for Pokemon, Dragon Ball Super, and Digimon TCG, as well as One Piece. They now buy list as well, so don't hesitate to reach out and uh, they got your back. Really high customer service ratings. Thank you guys. And uh, yeah, let's get to the video. What's up you guys, Joe Dobby here with another deck profile for you for Grand Archive and we actually have a Turbo Xander Fire Element base um, and this was created by Sweet Dreams. Uh, I did a little bit of an interview as well and learned a little bit more about how the deck works. I for one really like the Assassin class in all MMOs and RPGs that I've ever played, which is why here we are. I really had to ask about this deck because I do think that it could be very powerful. Um, and based on how it sounds, it sounds very strong. So we're just going to dive right into this. So for the material deck, um, obviously the 12 cards, we're starting off with the Spirit of Fire. Um, that's the base, draw seven cards. That's basically how you play the game. And then we go to our level one Xander here, which is the on enter glimpse two. put a prep counter, very standard. Um, going into Xander two, it's got the inherited effect to uh, hurt <laughs> rested units by one more damage, um, as long as you're attacking a rested unit, which is cool. But this deck takes advantage of Xander three blinding steel. And a lot of decks that I've seen or that I've tested personally don't actually take advantage of this third Xander as much. I'm not really going into Luxem. Um, all I'm doing is taking advantage of the Assassin class and Xander is pretty much just there. But in this deck, we turbo into Blinding Steel Xander level three because that's actually one of your main win conditions. Um, so at the beginning of your recollection phase, you may reveal all cards in your memory. Uh, for each Luxem element card you reveal this way, each opponent puts a card from their hand into their memory. So that's good hand control right there. Um, and I think that's a pretty powerful effect. Uh, and you being able to trigger your Luxem cards when you reveal cards from your memory is also a very big deal, especially because it triggers up your recollection phase, which means that you'll be able to grab it, scoop it back up and, and, and play it and get, get that much more advantage, which I think is really good. So we have a lot of staples here. Grand Crusader Ring being the number one staple. Um, it's pretty much the, one of the best material uh, or regalias in the deck um, or in, in the game, sorry. Um, it's just a draw, banish draw one. Next, we've got Orb of Regret. Shuffle up to three cards from your hand into the deck, then draw that many cards. I imagine this is where you are struggling and you open with too many um, Luxem cards, you know, at the very beginning of the game. You can Orb of Regret your way out of that situation and ultimately draw those cards later on as well, which is very good. Orb of Glitter is a super huge card at the beginning of your recollection phase, Glimpse 1. You get to see what you could be drawing into, etc. And then you can banish and draw a card. So Luxera's map is a card that I haven't used as much, uh, but apparently this is a really good one. So this card costs one less to materialize, so it could be a zero once you are level three Xander. So this is a clutch card because this allows you to search for your finishing attack. You can banish Luxera's map and search your deck for a card and put it into your memory and then shuffle your deck. So you can actually trigger this effect on your turn, right? Um, and then if you've got cards like uh, strategic plot, if I'm not mistaken, um, you can reveal these uh, cards from your memory and trigger their effects. Safeguard Amulet, just for a little bit of defense whenever you would um, take non-attack damage, especially for the Rai uh, matchup, you can take, uh, you can prevent four. Assassin's Ripper is a very big combo piece um, in my deck, in my non-level three Luxem deck. I imagine it's still a very good card here because it adds plus two when you remove a prep counter. And I don't know how much prep counters um, this deck is really gonna dive into. I imagine not a lot, um, but that one prep counter that you get from Xander level one, at least you have some use for it here. Next, you've got Poisoned Dagger. This is one of my favorite materials or regalia in the entire game. I love the banish deal one damage to a unit and every 
damage you do to that unit that same turn, they take one more. I actually love this. This is the main archetype in a lot of the MMORPGs that I've ever played that I do. I do a lot of poison dagger um, overtime damage because, you know, you do big damage and then they kind of try to get away in PvP and then the poison just takes over if they're, if, if they're not able to like uh, recover in time, which I think is really cool. So thematically, this is why I love Xander, you guys. It's, it's stuff like this, like effects like this. And last but not least, Blinding Orb, which allows you to banish itself to put two cards from your opponent's hands into their memory, and its class bonus is draw cards. So Blinding Orb is very strong, a lot of hand control there, as well as a free draw. So now we are actually going to dive into the main deck. Um, there's a couple things that we're gonna have to go through, but mainly, like, ultimately the focus is just cycling through your hand, getting as many cards as you can um, to your hand and using a lot of floating memory to get to what it is that you need. So we're going to dive into the floating memory cards first, starting with um, Tempered Steel. One thing I like about Tempered Steel is you can uh, put a durability counter on your weapons, which I think is very good. And um, in this in this deck specifically, your main weapon is Assassin Ripper. So having that extra damage for now and with the durability allows you to strategically determine when to actually uh, remove a prep counter from this card, uh, but you'll still be able to do one damage every so often with Assassin's Ripper. Next, we have uh, four copies of Idle Thoughts. I think this is a very good floating memory. It's probably one of the best floating memory cards currently. Uh, look at the top four cards of your deck, put them back in any order. Get exactly what you need when you need it during draw phase. And when you are cycling through your deck, especially when you are running fire um, as your key uh, element, you're gonna be able to draw in trash a lot. It's also a very good trash target, especially if you don't really want to like uh, do things too much. So you've got Honorable Vanguard here, Floating Memory. Um, one cool thing about this card is if you're seeing a lot of your non-floating memory characters or allies, you can trash. You can use this card as trash fodder to set up your material, uh, material step next turn, which I think is very good because of that floating memory. It's got a durability of two as well, so it'll just be annoying over time until your opponent deals with it. Um, tendency is because there is floating memory, if you choose to place this on the board, they will ignore it. Um, for as long as they can, but eventually they're going to have to get rid of it somehow. Um, for more floating memory, I think the last one here is actually Kingdom Inform. Oh no, we have a couple more. So we've got Kingdom Informant, um, which has stealth, which is cool, but class bonus floating memory. So with this card in the deck, I think Honorable Vanguard's just that card that you instantly trash um, because stealth is kind of cool. Or you can do the reverse, right? Tr trash the Kingdom Informant if you want to place Honorable Vanguard so it, it, it becomes a target or an easier target for your opponent to kind of be distracted by. Um, I think that would be also a good switch or strategy depending on the type of person that you're facing, especially if you know them and you face them quite a bit at locals. Um, and now here we are with Veteran Soldier, Floating Memory. I think this is one of those cards that due to its cost, um, you could potentially play, but more often than not, if I were piloting this deck, I am more likely to actually throw this into the discard pile with the cycling of the fire element cards, um, just to keep getting floating memory. Uh, one of the things that um, Xander struggles with a little bit is finding a spot where you can actually access a lot of floating memory. Um, and I think having normal cards with floating memory is the way to go. So for the normal cards, we're going into Library Witch and um, it's intercept, so nice early defense and early draw because on death you get to draw a card. You've got Korhazi Courier here, which has stealth and it's basically also like a hasty messenger. On hit, draw a card, then discard a card. So it's the reverse. Um, hasty messenger makes you discard to draw. Korhazi does the, diff the the opposite, which I think is much better, uh, thus the class bonus specifically for Assassin, and it allows you to actually deal uh, damage to a unit if you um, discarded a Fire Element card. Cremation Ritual is awesome. If you early game drop your cards with um, Floating Memory, 
uh, all of a sudden that kingdom informant becomes much more important to put down versus the honorable vanguard because that kingdom informant can do a little bit of chip damage until you get your cremation ritual um, because stealth is unlikely going to be an easy target for them you can then pop your own kingdom informant for when you want to materialize and then draw two cards and trash one and by then maybe kingdom informant has done one two maybe even three chip damage which is pretty good we've got creative shock which is just a draw two trash one uh, you're not a mage so you're not taking advantage of the class bonus but this is still a very very powerful card in xander um, and the archetype as a whole because you really want to see things you just absolutely want to see cards and that's pretty much the the big deal four copies of hasty messenger on attack you may discard if you do draw a card absolute staple in, in in fire base decks i would say that it's an absolute staple in all fire base decks no matter what the champion you've got um running with so here it is and clumsy apprentice which i was actually <laughs> which I was actually very confused by a little bit um, because Xander already has pretty low health um, but with the healing that you get from its Luxum this draw card could mean a very big deal on enter you deal two damage to your champion and then you draw a card right so you kind of hurt a little bit early game but if you are able to turbo up into xander it doesn't really matter because we're gonna uh, pretty much segue into luxum sight which has the effect of whenever you reveal this card from your memory recover three so the most powerful thing about this card is it's when it's revealed from your memory right so as long as you know what you're doing as long as you're not really using Luxum Sight apart from your recollection phase where you have to reveal it from memory, you're just going to keep gaining three memory. You're going to keep recovering, which hindsight, once if, if you're going into that, that level three sander super fast, uh, that Clumsy Apprentice um, early two damage doesn't really matter at that point, right? Because you're just going to reheal and reheal, which is very good. And it's a draw a card as well. So it's a fast spell, so you can... Use it from hand to counter, draw a card, and draw into a potential counter or something that you can trigger fast as well, um, which is very good. Next, we've got Gleaming Cut, and on attack, uh, choose and reveal a card in your memory. If the revealed card is Luxum, Gleaming Cut gets plus two. So you can do things like reveal uh, Luxum Sight from your Gleaming Cut, and when it's revealed from memory, you recover three. So in addition to that recollection phase, if you play Gleaming Cut, if I'm not mistaken, let me know in the comments if this is wrong. You can actually recover six, which is very powerful. And um, element bonus, whenever you reveal Gleaming Cut from your memory, you may banish it. And if you do, draw two cards. So that option to draw extra cards is very important. Um, but generally, I think the big combo piece here is actually Light Weaver's Assault. So reveal all your cards in your memory. Once again, all these revealed effects start to trigger, which is amazing. And choose any amount of units and deal damage equal to the amount of cards revealed this way split among them. So you want a really fat hand of cards in your hand um, and then pretty much just deal big damage. <laughs> Um, element bonus as well is whenever you reveal Light Weaver's Assault, choose a unit and deal damage to it. So you can potentially have a combination of Light Weaver's Luxum Sight, Gleaming Cut in your hand and memory and just keep revealing them and being annoying and dealing damage, healing and stacking that damage through um, Poison Dagger, you know, in that one big swing turn. And a very good enabler of all of these effects is Uncover the Plot. This is a slow effect, so you trigger it mainly on your turn, but this allows you to reveal all cards in your memory and draw a card. In addition to that, Uncover the Plot actually adds two prep counters, making your Assassin's Ripper pretty decent, um, which is pretty awesome. I like that a lot. So very solid deck here, and one of the big combos that was described to me by Sweet Dreams is that... Um, you play Light Weaver's Assault and then take the opportunity to play another one to get both to see eight cards for 16 damage or more, depending on how big your hand size was. So strengths is that it turbos really well. It can hit level three on time, which is fairly quickly, about 95% of the time, which don't quote me on, his, uh, on their stats, uh, but very impressive stuff. 
very good on card draw library which obviously in cremation ritual is a very good combo for for all that stuff and um floating memory to go level two three almost every game that's a natural mechanic that we really try to exploit floating memory is very powerful and its only weakness is if it gets outpaced so lorraine is the deck to beat and sometimes lorraine really gets to what it needs to extremely fast and once they get to level three if you are only on pace uh, if you're at level two lorraine for example and you are a xander level two i would say <laughs> you're kind of in trouble right unless you're seeing your luxum sites and you're able to like heal uh enough to not um get pretty much otk'd that said uh i think it functions very well and going into the sideboard here we've got four copies of spark a light this is a good finisher i guess like it's just you know two unpreventable damage and it's a fast belt so if your opponent has like two health left and you just want to finish them off this is pretty good unpreventable damage also stops um, some shields uh, from the water element and from Rai, etc. You also have Flame Sweep here, which is a cleave, so very good for um, a lot of decks, especially in Wind, I, I would say, that run Swarming. Um, so depending on the matchup, like uh, Flame Sweep could deal big damage. And last but not least, we have Immolation Trap as well, which is a very good card to effectively uh, destroy a damaged ally. So... Um, very good for board wiping so the sideboard is really just a focus on removal on the board side state of things um but the main deck itself is really just a focus on assassinating the champion uh that you are facing um that said uh, i love the deck and i'm definitely gonna try it and build it myself thank you guys so much for watching let me know in the comments what you think below sweet dreams if you're watching this let me know if i explained it relatively well and i hope that you guys get to enjoy this deck so thank you for watching and peace bye